Hi everybody, this is uh, Mr. Dell here, and we are looking at uh, today the CPM. Uh, this is CC3 course three, all right, uh, section um, 3.2.5, specifically number 3-117. All right, so we've got, this is uh, has to do with actually one of our checkpoint um, exercises, uh, specifically dealing with unit rates and proportions. All right, so we want to dig deeper into making sure we're really good on solving uh, for unit rates and solving proportions given certain situations. So for part A, it says if two and one fourth pounds of bananas cost $1.89, what is the cost per pound? So this is one of those that is asking us a unit rate, right? It wants the unit rate of cost, that cost per pound. So we know that, um, I, and I'm setting up, I'm setting this up as cost per pound. I want to make sure we understand cost per pound. So what we're looking for is the cost per one pound, right? So we want to have our money on top and the weight on the bottom, the pounds on the bottom. So for part A, if I set this up, I'm going to say there's a dollar eighty nine is the cost for. I'm setting up my my initial ratio for two and one fourth pounds. So my initial ratio here is one dollar and eighty nine cents for two and one fourth pounds. Okay. So that being said, I, I want to get my unit rate and my unit rate would be to convert this to something that is, what is that cost? So I need to figure out what that cost is over one pound, right? So when you think about a ratio to a unit rate, you're dealing with a fraction, right? Your ratio is a fraction. So in order to convert this fraction to have a denominator of one, Therefore, I'm going to simply take and divide, I'm going to divide the bottom by two and one fourth, right? Two and one fourth divided by two and one fourth, that's my one. So what I do to the bottom, I need to also do to the top. So basically, I've got to take this $1.89 and divide it by two and one fourth, and that's going to get me my cost per pound. So we could do that uh, via a calculator at this point. Uh, the, the process is what I want to make sure we know. And so that's our process. So the $1.89 divided by 2 and 1 fourth is going to give me 84 cents exactly. So this value here, when I do that division, so that becomes... 0 0.84 which is in this case 84 cents so for part a what is the cost per pound we would answer it by having it be um, it's 84 cents Oops, writing off there 84 cents for every one pound that's my cost per pound for a okay so that's given a word problem now given a a table, how do I find, in this case, I want to find the weight per centimeter. So I've got a situation where I've got this table and I see that when it's nine kilograms, the length is 15. When it's 12 kil uh, grams, not kilograms, grams, the length is 20 centimeters. So here's a table. Give it a table. Any one of these values would then be able to give me that um, cost or that weight per centimeter right so i could set up um let's set let's use um let's use the 50 and the 30. so i'm gonna say for b i'm gonna make myself some room and do it on this paper here so for b i can see that it is and i'm and i'm looking for what i want it to be is weight so i want my grams per one centimeter that's what i'm looking for that's my goal how many grams for one centimeter that's the unit rate that i want right that's my unit rate that's what i'm looking for so right now i'll set up one of these data points and i know that i've got uh 30 grams 
for every 50 centimeters, right? So I use this last data point. So what can I do to convert? This is one of the ratios, right? This right here is a ratio, a ratio that I have. How do I take that ratio and convert it to be a unit rate? Well, in this case, I'm going to divide top and bottom by 50 because I want my denominator, which is 50 here, to become a 1. So really, I can look at this and say, okay, what is 30 divided by 50? And that will give me my grams. 30 divided by 50. So we end up with this being uh, 0 0.6 grams for every one centimeter. When I do that 30 divided by 50, I get 6 tenths. So there's my unit rate for B. And, and that would have worked. I want to I show something here. That would work for any one of these. I could have set it up to be, say, the first data point, 15 centimeters for 9 grams, right? That's what, it's, that's what is listed up here, 9 grams, 15 centimeters. So 15 centimeters for 9 grams. If I were to use that and try to convert that to be what is um, – Oops, actually, I, I got to flip that. I'm sorry. I just realized I did uh, my ratio the wrong direction. So let's let's relook at this one. So I could set it up instead of 15 centimeters to one gram. Here, I'm going to scrap that. And I'm going to say over here, I want it to be nine grams for 15 centimeters, right? Because I'm trying to convert this to be one centimeter on the bottom. So to how many grams? So in this case, I would divide top and bottom by 15 to get that one as my denominator and when i divide nine by 15 taking nine and divided by 15 again that would still give me six tenths so six tenths grams over one centimeter so i still get the same unit rate so no matter what data point i choose in this case it's going to give me the same unit rate all right and c let's look at c so c we've got a graph now so given a graph, so I need to find what? It wants me to find the cost. This is my unit rate right here that I need to find, the cost per bottle. So for C, I want to find the cost per one bottle. That would be my unit rate that I need to find. So if I look at my graph, I know I can find some data points to determine that would be. So my cost per one bottle. In fact, with my graph, I can see that this is two bottles. So one bottle is right here. So if I can determine where is that data point when it comes to cost per bottle, where is that data point? Looks like it's below $5, right? So I mean, I can make an estimate based on what I have. Or if I knew I could find some um, an exact point of this graph, and so looking at this graph, hard to determine. I, don't, I think we we're going to have to find an estimate here because usually an exact point is where the line goes through the lattice, one of the lattice points. And it really is a, I'm struggling to see where exactly that is. So really, if we think, if we just use this graph, then at this point, we can say one bottle and kind of do an estimate. I know that I'm going up by fives every large line here every every couple lines so that's just below five um above 250 so we may say that's three dollars and approximately three dollars maybe three dollars and fifty cents so this one i'm going to say is approximately about three dollars and fifty cents a bottle based on this graph because we've got to be able to read the graph and see that um where those lattice points are and that one's a that one's hard to see i maybe see one here that might be a lattice point there and we can check that one so that is at 35 and 10. looks like that's a 10 right so that's 10 and 35. so that point right there would be 10 comma 35. Um, and if we're looking at where that point is 10 35 10 represents the bottles so that would be 10 bottles. If I do this as a ratio, 
and thirty five dollars. And if I want to, if I want that to convert to be one bottle, I would what? I would divide top and bottom by ten because I want my denominator to be a one. And in fact, thirty five divided by ten is three point five. So we would have three fifty. So kind of confirms that our estimate of 350 a bottle looks right. Okay, so that is C. All right, so let's do D. D says, if 200 vitamins cost $4.75, what would 500 vitamins cost? So no, now we're not looking for a unit rate. We're looking to solve a proportion. So D, what do I know? I know that I'm going to make my space here. D, we know that 200 vitamins, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rate a ratio, 200 vitamins for every what? $4.75. Okay, so what I want to know is what is the cost for, I believe, let me move that up. I believe it says what is the cost for 500 vitamins, right? So I want to know what is the cost for 500 vitamins. So here's my, here's my setup, 200 vitamins for $4.75. So what is the cost for 500 vitamins? So this is where we've got a proportion, right? I need to figure out the missing value here. So I can, I can rewrite this without the labels. So I have just a number proportion, 200 over 4.75 is equal to 500 over X. So I need to solve this proportion. You could determine what that rate is, like 200 times something is 500. We could do the math that direction and just multiply top and bottom by the same. Or we could use cross multiplication, right, where you take and multiply 500 times 4.75. And then you do the same thing over this direction, 200, and bring down it. So equals 200 times X. So let's look at it that way. So what is, what is, let me determine that 500 times 475. So this is 2,375 equals 200 X. So then divide top and bottom by 200 over here to get my X all alone and determine what X is. So I'm solving this equation. So X equals, when you divide by 200, uh, x equals 11.875. So that's my what x is. So let's go back up. My original problem was asking how much it cost. So if we're going to look at this as a uh, an answer that applies to the word problem, we would say 500 vitamins cost and then I'm going to use put this in money so eleven dollars and I'll go ahead and round up right eighty eight cents so there's my final answer based on the math that we used our solving proportions to find the cost of 500 vitamins okay all right last one so last one make some space here last one is number F letter F F says a cookie recipe uses, so you can read that, a cookie recipe uses one half teaspoon of vanilla with three-fourths cups of flour. Uh, so we know that we have one half teaspoon, right, a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to write it out so I can have a nice ratio here. A vanilla with three-fourths cup of flour. So here's my initial ratio, the given information. So they want to know how much vanilla. So that's going to be, I need to set up a, a proportion here. Oops, some room get, so you can see that there. So I've got my ratio based on the information. They give me one half teaspoon of vanilla for every three fourths cups of flour. So here, how much vanilla? So vanilla is on top. So how much vanilla should be used with five cups? of flour. 
So I have a proportion set up with my labels so I can actually undo the labels and just rewrite this as a equation. So one half over three fourths equals X over five. So what do we do to solve this? I've got a proportion. I could use cross multiplication to solve this. Okay, so I'm gonna cross multiply my values and set up my equation. So this is three fourths X equals one half times five would be five halves, right? Oop, there we go. sorry about that. Let me push that up. Three fourths X equals five halves. So how do I solve for X, right? I want X alone. So to solve for X, you divide out the coefficient because you want all that to be a one. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So I end up with X is equal to what? Five halves divided by three fourths. Remember divide, division of fraction. You take the first one, leave it as is, and you invert and multiply. So you find the reciprocal of the second one and multiply. So when I multiply those, I end up with 20 over six. So if I'm gonna put this in terms of a application, because I wanna know how much vanilla, that would, uh, let's see, that, that first of all, <clears throat> that simplifies to be 10 thirds. And then I can make that into a mixed number of three and one third. So back to my original problem, X was what? X represented the cups of vanilla or excuse me, teaspoons of vanilla. So my final answer would be um, you need, you need what? We had three and one third. So you need three and one third teaspoons of vanilla. All right, there you go.